This is Let's Talk Business with your host, Mark Ebinger. Now, here's Mark. Welcome to Let's Talk Business, a show that highlights and promotes entrepreneurs to learn more about their vision, goals, and marketing strategy. Coming up on the show today, we're going to talk about helping business owners get access to capital. In studio with us today is Michael Pierce, the owner of U.S. Capital Lenders, where they help businesses gain access to capital that they need to grow their business. Michael, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you very much. Good morning, and thank you for having me. I'm your host, Mark Evinger, the owner of Kruka's Virtual Staffing, a company that specializes in hiring virtual assistants from outside the United States. And I am Heather Bame, a certified business trainer and coach who focuses on helping business owners gain clarity and insight into their business that help them have confidence to take action today. A quick reminder to follow the Let's Talk Business podcast on all major podcast platforms and social media where you can catch video versions of the show. You can get to everything easily from our website at satalkradio.com. All right, Michael, so getting access to capital is kind of an important thing for small businesses. I get that. So how did you get involved in in this? What's the background, like 90 seconds of background that led you to where you are right now with U.S. Capital Lenders? Okay. Well, uh, my wife and I, we've, we're very entrepreneurial. So we've owned several businesses. Uh, we've owned franchises. Uh, we've done franchise consulting, um, started businesses. And you know, when we're working in that, that realm of franchise brokering and consulting, we were working with a lot of different people that – you know, they wanted to start a business. And as we were working with them, you know, we would turn them over to one of our partners. And if they didn't qualify for, you know, standard, you know, funding, which was either SBA or 401k, they could tap into that. The partner would come back and say, sorry, they don't qualify. And, you know, it, when people are starting up a business or buying a business, they're always looking for reasons to, to not do it. I mean, it's just that doubt. So when you throw in that doubt of, well, you, you don't qualify, then people decide, well, I don't want to, I don't want to buy that business. I don't want to start. And so we ended up, you know, really losing a lot of, a lot of business that way. And then we kind of come into this, this alternative financing, uh, realizing that, oh my gosh, you know, there's other ways for people to be able to start and buy a business. And, you know, so that's how we kind of got into this. And then we realized that there's, this opens up a, a larger realm for us. I mean, it's not only just for startups, but I mean, you know, we can do equipment financing, uh, again, commercial real estate, uh, being able to do working capital loans, um, you know, debt so, restructuring. So all those things that we can now be able to do because we've just kind of opened the door to that. So you're about providing solutions to them not being able to get traditional lending, but you don't want them to go to a loan shark, right? Exactly. So um, it's alternative lending. Is that kind of what they call it or what's the term? Yeah, I mean, that's kind of what the industry is. It's kind of alternative lending, um, which may sound bad, but I mean, it's just it's just outside that, that standard banking uh, construct. Okay. Uh, because banks are very, they're very regulated, so they can only lend based on those regulations. And the people that we work with, uh, and we work with about 100 different lenders, I mean, these are investment groups. These are uh, alternative lenders that, you know, they, they're not, uh, com- they're not com- bound to the um, constructs of government in, in which they have to, um, they just have a lot more flexibility in being able to do that lending. So, so the business of U.S. capital lenders is going out and building relationships with lenders that you, you can then take you know, I guess, applications to saying, hey, this business wants this, and then you just kind of shop it around for them? Yeah, what we're going to do is really find kind of the best solution uh, because it, it, you know, it may, they may come to us and say, well, you know, I would like, uh, I'd like a term loan to to be able to to do some of the uh, short-term work that I'm doing. Well, maybe a working capital loan is, is a better solution for you. Uh, maybe that's that's a better way to to work with your finances, and so we're going to figure out what makes the most sense for them, and and what's going to give them the best return. What did building that network look like for you? I'm assuming these guys don't advertise. Uh, we give away money. Well, they they do advertise. Um, so you, know, but for us, and specifically for me, what I like to be able to do is is work with commercial bankers, uh, because again. The bankers, when somebody comes into a bank and wants to borrow money, and I mean, we went through this when we started our first business. You know, we had we had this franchise. We came into the bank that we've had our money there for years and said, I'd like to have a loan to, to be able to start my business. And they looked at us and they said, well, well, it's a new business. And sorry, you have equity in your home. We can't help you. Uh, and so we're like, well, we were stomped out of there and went to the next bank. And they said the same thing. We realized, OK, well, now I understand. Um, 
So the problem is when the bankers have that, they don't, I mean, this is their customer. They don't want to make them, they want to help them find a solution for them as well. So we want to be that solution for those bankers because a lot of times if somebody comes in and they may, maybe a small thing, it, most banks, two years, you need to be in business for two years. Right, but we're and, talking about building that network out of these lenders that well, building the lenders those relationships. And, and the referrals, How did you go about doing that? Well, again, being part of a, some associations, so we have that. Um, and they, they do kind of advertise, so it is trying to find those lenders that we do want to work with, and we become kind of um, uh, brokers for those lenders uh, and, and trying to understand what they offer. And it, it is it's quite a lot of different offerings that are out there. And so How do you vet of, them? Um, again, it, it, part of being in the association uh, allows us to do that. Um, but we're also going to be, when we're talking to uh, you know, our, our representative, we're, we're going to be asking them a lot more questions about what kind of lending they do, how long they've been doing this, um, you know, what's their turnaround time. Um, you know, we're looking at things, uh, what kind of fees they charge. Uh, you know, if, if, you know, if they're, they're charging fees, it just seemed to be really you know, extraordinary. You know, we're really not going to deal with those, those folks. So, right, and how they treat the loan after the loan exists, right? I mean, what happens to that? Do they do they sell it? What, I mean, what's the after effect of that? Is that something you take into consideration as well? Um, not so much. I mean, because you, you just can't tell. Because a lot of times, even with banks, they might end up selling those too. I guess um, the contract language has to be pretty tight then exactly. so that it protects it protects the business owner, right? Exactly. And, and a lot of these, these loans too, especially you think about like a line of credit, I mean, this is a long-term relationship. Mm. So we want to make sure that whatever we're putting into place is a good, reputable company uh, that, that they can build that long-term relationship with them. So just so I understand to Heather's question is that when you're looking to build out this network, you just become a member of, of one association or multiple associations, or how do you build that out? Um, there, there's really not that many associations, but yeah, we become members of a, a couple of different associations. Uh, and then again, it is just going out and trying to, I mean, researching and finding lenders that we can work with. And sometimes those, those are banks. I mean, you know, we do refer people to banks as well. Um, so we, you know, we, that's why we build those relationships up. So what I think is interesting here is you kind of, you jumped in, you owned businesses, you consulted, you sold franchises. So it seems like you guys are kind of those people that jump in and you saw a need for the financing of business owners who couldn't get the traditional. So you jumped into the financing side. What was the learning curve to go from being a business owner and a consumer to being a broker of alternative financing? Actually, the learning curve wasn't that much because hmm. it, it's amazing, because as a business owner, you, it's amazing how much you actually learn. I mean, it, on the job, you, you learn a lot. And so what we're really, the stuff that we were kind of dealing with, we'd already dealt with in the past, and so we knew exactly kind of what questions to ask, what, you know, what kind of options people would be needing, um, and just also just understanding business. We've, we've talked to a lot of people. We've actually talked them out of loans um, <laughs> because, when, you know, Laura and I, we both, we, we both enjoy numbers. We, we love looking at, at P&Ls. We look at balance sheets, and, and we love being able to look at it. And, and from doing that, then we, we were able to ask more questions. And as we do that, we start uncovering some stuff where it's like, well, maybe, maybe a loan isn't necessarily right for you here. Um, maybe you need to look at some more operational things. Let's get you in contact with some people that may be able to help you operationally, help you with your expenses, uh, rather than you getting into this loan that you really may not need. Um, so, so it really wasn't a big jump for us. Just, we, we just had that experience already, um, and, and just you know, it, it just seemed natural for us, I guess. So, do you enjoy working with that that type of person that is just? getting started or you guys prefer the more established business owner you really both of them um you know the ones getting started the hard part is overcoming that fear mm -hmm. um so that's always that challenge and we do work with a lot of franchise brokers um because we know what they're going through and trying to get somebody um into that business so we have that aspect of it uh but at the same time you know for all of our years that we've owned businesses uh we do enjoy that part of of helping people solve a problem and, you know, it's like, you know, you've been in business for 10 years and, um, you know, and your margins aren't aren't where they need to be. Um, you know, now you're looking at a loan. Let's see how that's going to affect, you know, your business. Let's see how that might affect your margins. What do we need to do here? So but, you know, we like solving problems. I mean, it's just one of the things we enjoy doing. Well, let's talk about interest rates. Are they going to be different? At a, are they less at a bank? Are they more favorable at a bank versus a private lending? How do they compare? The, the bank is always going to be your best bet. 
I mean, you know, that's going to be the best place to be able to go to for a loan. You're going to get your best terms. You're going to get your best interest rates. Uh, now, with a lot of our lenders, we still get some very good interest rates. Um, I mean, we recently had a, uh, a uh, church that uh, got some financing, and they were uh, basically um, redoing a piece of property that they, they purchased. And, you know, we were able to get them at, what, 7.5%, seven, seven um, which, is, which is very good. Um, so, and again, it's also going to depend on, you know, the, the credit of the, of the, of the person borrowing, uh, the business itself. So it, I never really can tell people we're not like a bank where we say, well, we'll get you this interest rate because it, 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 there's a lot of variables that go into it. That's why we, you know, we're going to collect that information, kind of work with them and kind of figure out what's going to be the best solution for them. And what are some of the pitfalls that people need to look out for as they start exploring the world of alternative financing? Well, some of the pitfalls, uh, and I'll give you an example, um, which is actually you know, kind of a, not a good example for us as well as uh, the person, but uh, we got a call one day uh, from a lady who was pretty mad uh, because she's like, you guys collected this money up front and didn't give us this loan. And I, I'm trying to go through this. I, I'm sorry. It's, it's not us. You know, we, we didn't work with you. And you know, what they had done is they had answered, uh, somebody had done a telemarketer call, uh, the worst part of it was they said that they were us. Oh no! And they and then the, and it was it was the people that I was talking to. They sent me over all the stuff. These people had used our logo, used our name. Uh, everything looked the same, and it was very professional. Uh, but then when you looked at at it a little bit closer, uh, it was U.S. Capital lenders out of New York. The phone number didn't work. The email didn't work. The address when you looked it up, so they're on the tenth floor and it's a two story building. Um, and, and these people, they said, well, you know, you give us this money up front and we'll get you the loan. And they gave him the money. They didn't get a loan. Uh, and yeah, and, and, you know, those kind of things, it's, it's scary to hear about. Uh, but people just have to be aware when you're solicited by a telemarketer or even email to really look at the company that, that, that's saying that they're, you know, that, that they're providing the service. Now, again, it would have taken a little bit more because, like I said, the way they found us is they just went on, on the website, found us, and, and called the number, which, mm -hmm. you know, had they looked at the, the invoice that they had and tried to call that number and looked that a little bit further, they probably would have found that out. So, yeah, that's one of the things that they kind of need to be weary of is how they're being uh, approached. Uh, generally, if, you know, if it's from a referral source, somebody's telling you, hey, listen, I know, you know, I know Mike, I know, I know Bob, they have this company, um, you know, working through referrals is a little bit better. Um, so that's like a straightforward scam you're talking yes. about there. But what about, aside from a scam, just within the industry, are there things that, uh, you know, a business owner should be paying attention to when we're going through the process that might be red flags that we're not aware of? Yeah, and some of those red flags are, uh, again, collecting money up front. Um, most lenders, you know, will not do that. If there is any money, those fees are going to be put on, on you know, into the loan or they're going to be collected once the loan has been funded. Uh, mm -hmm. That's some of the, the bigger things. Um, also, really looking at, uh, you know, the information that they're collecting. Um, you know, sometimes, you know, there, there is going to be a need to collect a lot of, uh, a lot of financial information um, but outside of that, I mean, if there's a lot of other personal information that they're collecting that doesn't seem to be applying to the business, may not be uh, may not be good to to be giving all that out as well. Okay, and when you're so there's this piercing the corporate veil thing, right? And a lot of lenders want to have that personal guarantee to come along with the business part of it. Right. How do you guys treat that? Uh, it's a lot of times it can be the same thing um, because again, what people also have to understand with, with SBA loans. I mean, with an SBA loan. Uh, they're going to be looking for collateral. And again, the SBA is not the one doing the loan. It's actually the bank that's that's actually doing the loan. The SBA is backing up the bank. So if there's anything that happens, the bank is still going to be coming after you for that loan. So they they want to have collateral put into place, and that's usually your home. And a lot of times people you know don't necessarily want to do that. Uh, but at the same time, there's that personal guarantee. So they're looking at your credit score. Uh, so even with our lenders, that's some of that we're going to be looking at that as well. Um, there a lot of times are going to be personal guarantees that, that go along with that. Uh, although we do have some loans that, that can be unsecured, uh, so we do work with uh, lenders that can do some unsecured funding, uh, and they'll some of those will do that through the business, so it actually doesn't get reported back to your personal credit. It actually is through, through your business, so it goes on the business credit. 
Uh, so there are some alternatives there as well. So speaking of business credit, do you guys help businesses you know, through that process of getting a, a credit established? Yes, we can. Uh, we don't do that ourselves, but we have partners that we work with mm. that can help businesses do that. And, and that's and when you're talking about piercing that corporate veil, that's the one thing that people don't necessarily think about is building up the credit for that business. Mm-hmm. Um, and and that's yeah you know, again that's some of the things that we you know kind of educate people on because uh, it, it's amazing how many people you know, even though they're looking for money and you start realizing yeah they they don't really have a real good handle on their business itself. Um, it's kind of like well I made money. Uh, but why is there not enough money in my account? And then you start drilling into that and you're, and you know, and they're just wanting to borrow more and more money. And it's like, okay, we need to fix this. Uh, but it, it is coming back to the fact of, you know, let's build up that business credit. And so we do have partners that we work with to be able to do that. Yeah, that makes sense. So obviously you work with a lot of businesses. What percentage are not able to fulfill their commitments? Is there like a higher percentage on the alternative side? Or are you seeing most people hit their payments? Most people hit their payments. Um, I mean, we don't really track that since we are not the oh, okay. actual lenders per se. But I mean, really in the industry, it's no different uh, than, you know, than it is in, on the banking side. I mean, there's, the, there's not really much of a difference in, in defaults or anything like that. Okay. So at that point, it's kind of... Yeah. We're going to trust you to keep it up at this point. Bye. Yes. <laughs> Come to us if you need another one. Yeah. And, and again, that's, that's our role is really is, is providing that solution yeah. uh, and finding that lender that's going to be the best fit for the company. So what does look, that look like, keeping up the relationship with your client since it is that, you know, when you get the money, your, you know, piece of the transaction is done. What do you guys do to keep in touch with your clients? Uh, again, it's it's kind of just touching base every once in a while, again, using, you know, uh, email, social media, whatever we can to kind of stay in front of people. Um, And again, letting them know that, you know, we have other resources if they need them. Mm -hmm. Um, So, you know, we just do our best to, you know, know, whether it's trying to recognize birthdays, recognize anything like that, um, and just trying to keep those touch points. Right. Do you need any more money? You know, that kind of thing, right? (laughs) So a lot of people do that. Laura and I are just not those, those people that like to be pushy on stuff sure but what project you working on next we can get you some cash for that too i like that so what kind of uh, financial products are people coming to you for like uh, you know business line of credit fix and flip i mean what what are people coming to you for money for a lot of what we're seeing now is again startups and business purchases Uh, that seems to be kind of a a big thing right now i mean a lot more people are starting businesses um, or looking to buy businesses and so we've seen a lot more of that. Uh, also, starting to see more people looking for that line of credit, which is a very good idea at this point because, again, you don't know what's coming down the road. And usually when people come to get a line of credit, it's like it's kind of that, okay, well, I need this now because I've exhausted everything else. And then by that time, you know, you may not be able to get it because, you know, you were in better shape, you know, a year ago. Um, and financially, you know, the economy was a better shape a year ago or whatever. Um, so it's better to have those lines of credit in place and, and just use them every once in a while. Um, keep those in place because they, they, they're kind of, you know, it's an emergency fund a lot of times. Um, and so we, we are seeing more and more people starting to, to look at that and be able to do that as well. Um, starting to see a little bit more people also on that, uh, on that fix and flip side. Um, that's starting to pick up a little bit more. So we're seeing a lot more activity on that as well. Here in uh, San Antonio, South Texas uh, area? Much, yeah, just everywhere. Everywhere? Yeah, because, I mean, we work all across the U.S. So, What are they doing with the fix and flips on the other side of it? Is they just selling or keeping them as Airbnbs, or what are they doing? Uh, there, yeah, there's a lot of a lot of people doing the Airbnbs, um, and especially around here, a lot of that is people buying and turning those into Airbnbs. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, that's probably more of what you're seeing. Um, not as much as people just fixing and, and, and just, you know, selling, selling. uh, it's, they're, they're starting to keep them for a long-term, long-term investment. Yeah. we got a chiropractor coming on, I think it's no, right I after this him. one. Yeah. So, oh, that, <laughs> yeah, <you laughs> that's did. my chiropractor. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. So 17 Airbnbs he has, mm-hmm. I don't know if you know that or not, but yeah, he's, he's got a lot yeah, he's of, he's got them. his hands in a, a lot of real estate investments. So you'll yeah. have a fun conversation mm-hmm. after this. Right, I think you'll like cool. him. All right, so uh, how are you building your business? What are you doing to uh, to get the word out there? Uh, a lot of it, uh, networking. Um, again, just trying to build those relationships up. Again, looking at, at commercial bankers, trying to build up relationships there. Hitting uh, you know networking groups and stuff uh, in the local area. 
And then, uh, you know, again, you know, for my age, social media has not been, you know, has not always been something that, you know, that I've jumped into. So it, it's kind of the, it's kind of one of those things. It's a work in progress, but we, we've, we're managing to do a lot more on the social media, uh, looking at LinkedIn, uh, trying to make more connections there as well. Uh, personal so. branding. I see, I've, I've seen your LinkedIn, uh, but personal branding. You see pictures of you and what you guys are doing out there in the community. What referral yeah. groups are you part of? Any? Yeah. Um, part of uh, Network in Action is one of the referral groups. Mm -hmm. um, Reboot VA is another one that we're part of. Uh, and then there are ones that we kind of hit that are, um, you know, uh, they're not uh, they're not exclusive groups. Um, I mean, you got the San Antonio networking group that meets on Tuesdays. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, Adam. Yeah, Kavulik's, exactly. Uh, that's his deal there. Yeah, yeah, that's a good group. Um, so network in action. Tell me about that one. Um, it is one, it's, and it's actually a franchise um, that is. Is it Patrick part of that one? Yes, Patrick. Yeah, I know Patrick. He's yeah. actually been on the show back in the day. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's he's a good guy. It's a, it's an it, you know again interesting group. It's it's a little play on on how most networking is done, mm -hmm. and you know as a franchise, it is is a very up and coming franchise that's doing very well. Um, that actually started out in Houston. So, so how is it working for you? These network the referral group that you're part of, is it producing? It, it well again. What people, when people talk about networking, and when we talk about it too, it's like you have to realize it takes about a year before anything really develops. Because people will go to a lot of these mm -hmm. events, and it's like they go to one or two, and they're like, I didn't, I didn't get anything, I didn't get any leads, you know. And it's like you can't just go to one or two events. You know, it's it's a process. It takes time, and we've been in network connection for probably about four or five months now. Uh, so making some good connections there, uh, but I mean, again, it takes, I mean, it takes about a year really. And, uh, you know, and I look at some of the stuff that we've been doing. I mean, again, uh, Adam's group, um, it's probably been, I guess probably a little over a year now since I've been in that group, really good connections there. Um, are you doing a lot of one-to-ones? Yeah. Yeah. We, that, that really helps. It does. You know, and really the, the success of using a, a network or referral club is about, expanding your network it's not always on the referrals or referrals right. can take time right and it's just times sometimes it's hitting the right person at the right time i've yeah. seen that happen so but it is about building your network exactly. out and then staying in in contact with that network in a way that actually works yeah so how do you approach that from a networking standpoint so you go to the meeting every week you're going to do some one-on-ones what about mixers are you doing that as well um you know don't do as many mixers and that's only because from a personality side, I'm I'm very much an introvert, and it makes networking and marketing kind of hard. Doesn't it, it? it it does. It's a challenge, um, but you know you force yourself to do do things that you you know you know in order to, to make your business Get grow. Comfortable being uncomfortable. And exactly. Mm -hmm. And so you know, in the formats of of networking groups, the ones I like are again you know people get up and they announce who they are um, and what they do. And that way it kind of gives you, I don't want to say it gives you the, the target, but at least you know what they do and it gives you that ability to go in and talk to them. And a mixer, it's like you got to go, you know, you got to shake hands with everybody you, you can. Really just to, to make yeah, it work. And, and it's, it's uh, you know, it's just not me. I love and, mixers. Oh, yeah. Mark loves a mixer. Yeah, uh, I do. I'm and, fine in a mixer, but it's very uncomfortable for me and I end up having really? to go back and realize, yeah, you just have to. You can't really target strategy at a mixer. You have to go and mingle with everyone yeah. to find who your people are going to be. And you never know when you walk up. So you've got to have it like you can start talking to someone and realize that they are not a great connection for you. But you can't just be like, peace. Yeah. yeah. You got to continue talking to them. No, you don't. And then you walk up to the. No, well, you just say, I'm going to go grab another margarita. And you know this what I mean? is where being <laughs> more comfortable and less comfortable coming yeah. into the mixer dynamic it is. Whereas with the stand up, you can listen to everybody say what they do and then just yeah. head to the ones you want to talk we kinda, to. So here's we kind of associate it to kind of uh, being a butterfly, right? You, you know, you go to those mixers, you, know, you have to be a butterfly. So let me float let around me, and everything. Let me tell you a different approach on mixers. Mixers, in my mind, are a. a an add-on to the referrals, to referral clubs, right, that you're doing. Because when you get people that you know to come in, right, and then you're going around, it's, it's like you're, um, it's, it's a, an additional touch in a group setting that you can do more of in less time which is part of the discussions that we've had, right? So now, like me, I'll, I'll do anywhere from probably five to ten one-on-ones a week, right? So I'm constantly meeting people, talking to them. I'm not going to have another one-on-one -on -one with them 
for who knows how long, six mm -hmm. months, a year, two years, right? But part of my one-on-one -on -one is to say, hey, what mixer you go to? It's like, why don't you come to this one? This is a really good one. It's going to be 100 plus people there. I'm going to be there. I'd love to see you again. We can kind of reconnect. So that starts to break down the awkwardness because now you said, hey, come to this thing. I'm going to be there. And then when you see him, it's like, Michael, oh, that's right. You you do the alternate lending. And I got a guy over here who does flipping and is looking for additional funds. Come over here. Let me introduce you to him. That is like a, that's how I see mixers. That is true. It is a good way to kind of expand and let yourself be connected if you know someone already at the mixer. Yeah, and, and that's kind of the key. It's like you. If, you, if you know people that are already there. Mm -hmm. um, but you, that know that the, you know that you know when they're there, you know them because you invited them to be there. Yeah. That's why I'm saying it's like it's part of Strategic this strategy mixing. of don't just do referral clubs. Do a referral club and make sure they're going to a mixer. And don't, and then not just that mixer, but try and go to two mixers a month. And then this is a way to continually stay top of mind. And then you can take a couple pictures while you're there, tag people in it, and it's something you can do on LinkedIn. Well, let me take this in a different direction because <laughs> I've got another question. You've built successful businesses in the past. Yes. Now you're doing this. How long have you guys been doing the lending? I mean, it's been about, uh, about three years, really. Okay. Um, so what are you doing differently to build this business that you learned from your previous experience? Well, from our previous experience, really, uh, again, coming out of that comfort zone, right? Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of this does have to deal with, with trying to, to jump onto social media a lot more. Uh, again, because we, we do cover you know, uh, across the U.S. Um, so, you know, certainly had LinkedIn, the LinkedIn page for years, you know, Facebook page and stuff like that. But, uh, you know really utilizing it to its fullest extent, no. Uh, so f for us, it, it is getting into that that side of things a lot more uh, and being able to be more comfortable with that. Again, you talk about our LinkedIn page not having a lot of pictures. It's like, you know, uh, Laura and I are not not the ones. We don't, we don't like doing a lot of selfies. We don't like putting ourselves out there. But again, it, you know, it's something that if we want to, if we want to really to build this business up, it's some of the things we're going to have to do. And it's a, it's a challenge to be able to do. Is well, you it know more why about that is, though? It's personal branding. Well, no, I want to say, like, is it more about taking the picture or posting the content? Which is worse? Oh, taking pictures is not a problem. I mean, okay. we, have, we have selfies of us on, on all of our trips and stuff like that. Like, we have no problems to take pictures of ourselves. That's not a problem. It's, it's putting ourselves out there. It's posting the content. And posting it out there. That is kind of like, I don't know, it's just... It's just, it's just uncomfortable for us. It's not really, we don't like to be that center of attention. Why uh, do you guys see. have to post it? We don't have to post it, but it, but it, but you come back to the personal branding, it's got to be us. Um, and well, like having the, us out there is, I think, which challenge. Is like, I have a team that does all my sure. stuff for me, right? I'll take a couple pictures, it gets sent over to them, they take care of it, they, they do whatever they do with it, and then they post it, right? So it kind of takes that awkwardness off of my shoulders. Is that what you're getting at? Yeah. yeah. Well, but I mean, at the same time, I mean, you know, one of the things that we're doing too is utilizing a lot of technology, a lot of AI. I mean, I've got some good programs where it's like, you know, this stuff just, it, it writes the content, it, it curates the picture. I can upload a picture um, and boom, I've got it out on five, you know, five sites. All that stuff's pretty easy. So again, coming back to, you know, how we're, we're this is some of the change that we have to do mm -hmm. to be able to grow the business. So it's, it, it is a lot of that. So, I mean, you know, there's posting, which is fine, which we can certainly do. The personal branding is the harder part of it because it's like we just have a hard time, you know, putting ourselves out in the in the limelight of stuff. Uh, that's just you well, know, people not, follow people; they don't follow they businesses. Do. They do, um, but you know, that's kind of and again, that's kind of the new world that we're in with this new business. I mean, and our businesses in the past were never really like that. I mean, you know, we had businesses where we had you know 120 employees, and so you know we're. We're, we're running the business. We're, we're pushing the business forward, uh, building that culture and that environment. Um, now it's just us. And so we have to put ourselves out there. Well, that's what I think is so fascinating is AI is really lowering the barrier to entry on social mm -hmm. media by helping create the content. Obviously, it's not going to be able to write it like you would, but it gets you past the rough draft. Like, oh, my gosh, what do I even write? Yeah. But it still doesn't fix the problem of like that pressing post that actually doing it because I'm the same way like I just 
if I could stay off social media, I would, but it is necessary and it's not the content creation anymore because you got chat GPT, you've got your AI. It's the ick of actually just like copy paste, do it. That really gets me. So yeah. the question then becomes, how do you overcome that one last tripwire that well, keeps and when you you're from out, doing it consistently? When you're out actively networking, right, and then you're producing content and posting content, now you give people that you're actively networking an opportunity to engage with the stuff that you've got going on and see what you're doing, how you're relevant in your space, and you're staying top of mind. So these are the reasons why social media as an adjunct to what you're doing is super important. Yeah. Uh, that we have to, I think we have to address. You know, we kind of have to be everywhere all the time if we want to play at a high level. If we don't want to play at a high level, you know, we can do whatever we're going to do and it's going to go wherever it's going to go. But uh, I like that we can hit it hard. So, and that's kind of what we do. One of the reasons I started a podcast was just to produce content that was high level content that, you know, it's, it's an authority marketing position um, and be able to just push it out there and then build relationships with other folks. Yeah. All while doing the same thing. So, cool. So, what's the uh, what's the plan then? What's the five year plan for your business? Well, this uh, this business again, as we're getting as we are getting older, um, you know, you're always looking for, you know, what are you going to be doing? And this is this is a business that, you know, we can be seventy years old and still, you know, be doing this um, as opposed to roofing know, or something. Exactly. No. Um, or even, I mean, you know, even just, you know, I mean, what we, we used to own a home care business and I mean, it was a 24 seven business. Wow. Um, and I mean, I couldn't imagine being 70 years old and, and owning a, a senior home care business, uh, and, and trying to run something like that. This is something that, you know, we can certainly be able to, to have and, and, you know, continue on, you know, for as long as we want to. I mean, and again, we're still entrepreneurial. I mean, we're, we're working yet on another business, um, that Laura's kind of heading up, um, that is, it's called KPI Queen. So, um, mm. and again, it's coming back to that idea for for businesses because you're working with KPIs and KPI dashboards, setting those goals. Um, we see a lot of businesses that you know just don't they don't focus on that. Mm -mm. Most and, businesses probably exactly. don't. And, and I mean, you know, you know, even more on the lending side, and we're talking to somebody about their their their, their gross profit. You know, I don't know. You know, well, which will your expenses look like? Well, I'm not really sure. Um, you know, what, what is it that, that, you know, what are the things that you need to do to drive your business? Well, let's look at KPIs and be able to do that. And, and so that's something that we're starting and we're developing uh, kind of the, the dashboard that businesses can be able to use. And we're going to focus really on the home care industry because that's really our background. So it's a great starting point for us. You know the KPIs and we, yeah, they should yeah, be and we, tracking. And we know exactly <laughs> the KPIs they need to be tracking and how to read those and, and what people need to do to, to, to move that needle. Um, so, you know, we're always, you know, we always like to be moving forward on stuff. But this is something with with financing, something that we can certainly do until you know, you know, until we're 70, 80, you know, yeah. as long as we can go out and meet people and talk to people, you know, it's something we can certainly be able to do. Yeah, as long as you can that. do referral clubs and mixers and exactly. social media, right? You're good to go. <laughs> by the time I'm that old, I don't know what that's going to look He's like. He's like, by then, I hope uh, people just cool. know me and yeah. I don't have to go to those anymore. So they just send it to us and exactly. uh, they can be on a beach somewhere. I mean, I've heard if you push, you know, five years in networking hard, you know what I mean? Then you, you're set. I mean, you're going to have Well, that. that's the thing I think about San Antonio, too. If you establish the correct relationships with, with key people and maintain them, then you may not need to go out and build new ones as much, right? Like, when you first get started, you got to kind of go to everything just so you put your face out there. And then you start to find those people that are really great connections for you. And then you can get a little bit less all the way out there and more just like directed. And then it's just maintaining high level relationships. Yeah. And that's not as, well for an introvert, as taxing as going to a mixer. You might still be going to mixers when you're 70, Mark. Yeah, I might be, but see, I'm actually, <laughs> so I'm, I'm extroverted. I can be extroverted, right? But then I recover as an introvert, right? I need to be by myself. So I, I can come here and do podcasts all day. When I go home, I'm isolated, right? It's just so, I mean, I, I can definitely relate to what you're talking about when it comes to, you know, like going to mixers and it's like, uh, you know, whatever. But when you have a strategy and you prep it well, uh, they're really, really good. I think I've got a pretty good strategy that I'm working on. And who knows, maybe someday I'll, 
I'll put a formal class or something together because I think it needs to be taught on there's a really good way to do networking. Go out there, push it, and do it right and bring a lot of value. Like mm-hmm. when I sit down for a one-on-one, I'll, I'll legit give from one to five referrals on the spot. You know, and I'm making connections for you. Referrals are connections, though. That's yeah. a that's a something I, yeah. that are different. They all counted as the same that way, but <laughs> it's like, well, <laughs> so connections are like really to me. I'd rather have a, a good business connection mm-hmm. exactly than a referral because referrals are going to do whatever, especially if they just say, "Well, you know, so and so," and they drop it on you, right? right? But a, a a business connection exactly is huge, yeah. and that, that's what's more important. It's making being able to make those connections with people. Um, because it's, it's, you know, it's not about what referral you can give me. It's like, who do you know? Yep. You know, because you're probably going to know five other people that I can make good connections with who then know five other people. Uh, and then, you know, at that point, it's like I get one referral from those 15 people. Well, That's and 15 referrals right there. Those connections that are made like one on one are those people who have stopped networking in the general population. They're those people who have kind of leveled up outside of that and they're just maintaining their high level relationships now you'd probably never meet them just out and about bopping around but now you've met them because you were personally introduced and that's that's huge yeah. now you got to go meet them at pickleball or some mm-hmm. kind of uh you know non organization thing, or something yeah. like that are you doing non-profit stuff connections are you like uh participating with any non-profits no not currently you should i got a good one i can <laughs> connect you with no, seriously. I mean, because there's there's one that, that we support. We supported through the the podcast, mm-hmm. and um, it's actually there's a bit of networking that goes on there as well. Um, but it's a good way to kind of meet folks that don't go to referral clubs and they mm-hmm. don't go to mixers, but they're going to the nonprofit and they're still CEOs and executives and whatnot. Yeah. That could be really good connections. So, um, anyway, no, we'll invite you to the next one. There you go. And we could yeah. do lending for nonprofits. Oh, there you go. Plug that. So a lot of times, uh, traditional lending is tough for, for nonprofits. So we're actually working yeah. with one now in Florida that's uh, looking to purchase some, purchase a building and some land in Florida that's a nonprofit. So so we can that churches churches too that you know a lot of people banks have a hard time a lot of times with churches. We can do financing for them as well. So okay. Mm, so really, the last question I have for you is: What's the hardest part of your business? What is the part that like? Kind of keeps you awake sometimes, and you like maybe the part you don't like about it. What's the hard part? The hardest part is collecting all the information. It's like everybody they want they want a loan, they want financing, but then okay, well I need I need this filled out, I need this paperwork, I need these forms, I need these documents, and it, it's kind of like pulling teeth. You mean uh, you don't blindly trust everyone? Exactly. <laughs> Is it trust or is it just that they don't know the answers to the material, to the questions? They, maybe they don't have their act together to produce that stuff. No, well, it's more of, of collecting documents. I mean, because, again, we're, we're collecting, you know, tax returns, um, you know, bank statements, uh, sometimes pay stubs, all this kind of stuff for, for the lenders to be able, the underwriters to really be able to look at. So what I have to do is I have to collect all this stuff, really package it together when I go to those lenders, because those lenders are going to make a decision based on this information. And the better that I can present it along with their story, then the more opportunity I have for those lenders to say yes. But the hard part is getting it from the business owners. Is that what you're exactly. saying? Exactly. But why is that? Good question. You don't well, know. Well, I bet it's I, I, for I, the I, same I, reason that there are so many extensions during tax season, oh, just right? just procrastinating. It's exactly. just procrastinating. And also, like, you may not know exactly where that information exists. Mm-hmm. And, like, in order to find it, you have to sit down and figure out where it is and how do you yeah. find it. And... It's like different in real estate and stuff because you've got a house under contract. You really are forced to by a truncated timeline to do it. Right. But if if it's a business startup or a line of credit, I mean, there's really no hard end date. So they'll yeah. kick the and, can. And believe it or not, I mean, we've actually, you know, talked to businesses and we ask them, well, can you send over your, your P&L for the last two years or your balance sheet? And it's like, well, well, we really don't have that. Oh, no. You know, it's like, okay. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, the, the hardest part is trying to collect all that. Oh, um, man, you need it's, it's just trying, and Bookkeepers are like salivating listening to this, being like, oh, my gosh, we need to make a connection. <laughs> but you're a oh, great yeah. referral partner for bookkeepers. Yes. Yep, absolutely. 
and and again we you know we're working on our, our CRM too to kind of also develop that you know continual touch that once we get them in the system that I'm not having to call them all this time. It's like at least I get a text out, I get an email out to them, and then I get a reminder mm-hmm. to then I can call them um, because you know they, they just sometimes it gets a little overwhelming. So it's like I need to have I need to have those reminders. People telling me when do I need to do this? When do I need to do that? Yeah. So. Lots of fun. All right, Michael, if people want to get in touch with you, how do they do that? Uh, they can email Mike at uscapitallenders.com. Um, I, they can also give us a call. Uh, my phone number is 571-233-1935. All right, awesome. Thank you, Michael. Appreciate that. All right, as we wrap up the show, quick reminder, check out our latest podcast and catch video versions of the show anytime by visiting our website at satalkradio.com. That's going to be it for us for this one. You guys have a great week. We will see you on the next one. Thank you very much. Good job.